Hello again, everyone. My name is Marty Guthmiller, CEO at Orange City Area Health System, bringing you today on March 1, 2021, our 95th edition of the COVID-19 Community Briefing. Uh, not a lot of new innov innovative uh, uh, structure to the briefing today, um, but we will just jump right in and go first of all with our local scoreboard. Our uh, local scoreboard, uh, for those of you again, keeping track at home, 1,846 positives out of the 9,686 tests completed. Um, we'll probably hit that 10,000 mark in a couple of weeks uh, in terms of the number of tests. Um, but again, that's becoming increasingly irrelevant. Um, for the week, which is a more important number, we've had 24 positives during the week, uh, but that is out of 288 tests. And so that is only an 8.3% uh, positivity rate. In fact, I think that uh, that it's gonna represent uh, 24 out of the 37 positives that we had in Sioux County um, for the week. But we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So for the week, 8.3% positivity rate in Orange City, 14 day average in Sioux County. Uh, is 4.8%. That is up a little bit from 3.9, uh, but then down from 6.5 the time before. So still a good number, 4.8%. Um, the seven-day average, though, has jumped up to 6.7%, still a low number, but uh, more than the 3.9 that we had last week and 5.2 the week before. However, as best I can Put together uh, in looking at the state statistics, uh, we had, as I mentioned earlier, 37 positives this week, um, which which means our uh, we we've done fewer tests in a county, and so we've looked at that number and not really concerned about our 6.7 percent. We just did fewer tests uh, in the county for the week, and so. Uh, the, the, the lower your denominator, um, the higher the, uh, the percentage. The 37 is exactly the same as it was the week before when we had 3.9%. Um, and so the 37 plus uh, at 6.7 is um, not, nothing to be concerned about at all. Region three, uh, the 20 counties in Northwest Iowa, the 24 hospitalized in those 20 counties. Uh, that's down slightly from where we were last week at 25. And the week before that uh, was 16. There are four patients in the intensive care unit in these 20 counties. Three of those patients are on ventilators. The Iowa 14 day average is 4.2%. Very strong number again, uh, down from 4.3 a week ago, 7.9 7 two weeks ago. The seven day average is strong as well at 4.5%, uh, up a little bit from 4.2, but again, irrelevant, um, and down from 6.1 two weeks ago. So good numbers <clears throat> um, there as well. When we look at Iowans hospitalized for the first time, in a long, long time, we've dropped below the 200 level uh, at 196. Uh, that's down from 222 a week ago, 240 the week before that. Um, I, I haven't looked at these counties for a while, so I looked at Polk County, still number one at 29. Um, but And there were only four other counties in the state that had double digit uh, in terms of number of hospitalizations. Uh, the rest were all single digit. Sioux County uh, was zero in terms of Sioux County residents being hospitalized anywhere. Deaths were 5,471 total, <clears throat> an increase of 97 um, over previous uh, last week. Uh, Sioux County's official number is 69. Again, of those deaths, 92% uh, or with pre-existing conditions. Um, there's no significant variations at all from any of the demographics that we have been talking about all along. So um, I, I'm not, again, minimizing uh, deaths or, or 
those lives that are impacted, but um, nothing is changing uh, relative to uh, the infectivity of the rate or the, the acuity level of the rate, um, anything like that. The, the death rate on the rolling average is at historically low levels, basically um, since the, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, when it first got started, that's the current level that we're at. Shifting out of the statistics then into just kind of what's going on, <clears throat> excuse me. We, we are looking hard at uh, how we transition out of this pandemic. And, and again, that's partially uh, science, it's partially gut, um, it's partially guided by regulations and uh, all, all of the above. And so we're looking at that, we're looking at pretty hard. We're, we're looking at the weather uh, as we continue to be outside more, things might be more uh, conducive to loosening some restrictions. We're looking at the percentage of 65 plus people that uh, we have vaccinated now at this point. Um, we're looking at the fact that the nursing homes at Landsmere, uh, Pioneer Home have, have been uh, near 100% immunized at this point. Uh, the lower percentage of rates and infectivity that we have, of course, is factored in. Our, our med staff opinion, um, the other statistics that are there, um, and then, of course, the governor's proclamation. Uh, the next, uh, well, the current proclamation, I guess, is expi uh, uh, expiring on March 7. So we'll be really interested to see what happens with that. All of those factors merged together. Um, are gonna dictate our policy and our leniency, our loosening of restrictions, however you wanna define that. Uh, we're as anxious as anyone to get back to some degree of normal uh, or to find that new normal. And uh, just wanted you to know that we're, we're looking through that, we're factoring in all those different things and uh, looking to uh, be able to loosen things up here uh, in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Uh, things develop and develop pretty quickly, still are. Um, Friday afternoon, just past Friday, we learned that there, uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, is going to make available through the state allocation 900 doses of the single dose vaccine uh, that was just approved on Friday uh, to Sioux County. And so this week we will be receiving 900 doses as a county um, of the of Johnson and Johnson or Janssen um, vaccine. This is pretty strictly allocated to uh, food agricultural workers living or working in a congregate setting. Um, the state is being very direct with the uh, use of this allocation. Uh, we asked if we could apply it to the 65 plus population. The answer was no. Uh, and if we could not do that, we needed to give it to other counties. Uh, Sioux County was one of 17 counties in the, in the state that was allowed this. And so we wanted to take that opportunity um, and, and we took all of the 900 doses that uh, was made available to us. So this week, uh, as the week goes on, beginning Wednesday or, or even maybe Thursday, um, those doses will begin to be administered uh, by, by all the health providers in the county um, in those congregate uh, work settings, particularly with ag uh, food workers. Um, and so we will see how the week goes. Uh, we will uh, plan to do that. There is some risk to us in taking those 600 doses because we have to, if we don't do at least 80% uh, of, of those, um, that will impact our future allocation. So uh, we want to be able to take those doses that we can effectively get in people's arms. Um, this is a, a single dose, as I mentioned. So uh, it really helps uh, and simplifies things in some regards um, to not have to follow up with a, with a second dose. So that's uh, what's going on and the most recent development in the vaccination. In terms of what's going on locally here in Orange City at Orange City Area Health System, we expect to do over 500 vaccinations this week. Uh, 
This is our first week of doing two prime doses on Mondays and Tuesdays. And we're following up with three booster doses um, on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, and so we're now into the booster dose phase um, and we'll be doing roughly 100 people plus each of those days. So we expect to go through over 500 this week. The Moderna vaccine vaccination supply chain is still at 170 per week for the indefinite future. We have not been told that we're gonna get any more than that, uh, but we haven't been told we're gonna get any less than that. Um, and so we're, we're expecting to be able to uh, do that 170-ish plus, uh, maybe a little bit this week as we do get uh, a few more doses out of those uh, vials um, and, and that next week as well. Uh, we do have about 200 on our waiting list right now in the 65 plus uh, range. So we do expect to be able to be close to finishing the 65 plus group next week. Um, so in anticipation of that, uh, we are accepting wait list, uh, uh, or we may, or making eligible, put it that way, um, PK through 12, uh, teachers, uh, school workers, and daycare providers who are 50 years old and over are, are now eligible for our list. And so uh, we'll ask that if you're in the daycare world or in the PK through 12 world, um, that is the next tier per the state guidelines. And we are going to begin that tier with the 50 plus. So let's take care of the 50 plus folks and, and you're eligible to call in right now and get on our list. Um, it, it'll probably be within a couple of weeks that you would be able to have the vaccine. Um, and then after that, our next tier is gonna be all PK and uh, through 12 and daycare workers. So uh, 50 plus, get on our list now. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, keep you informed as we go along. In terms of high V, uh, I believe hy V in Sioux Center received 234 doses a week or so ago. Um, our understanding is that was all administered, which is good, uh, but I do not have any knowledge of an additional allocation to hy V in Sioux Center at this time. Uh, so it may, there may be more, but I simply do not know about that. I, I doubt it if I haven't heard about it, but it could be. There has been no mention. We, we've received some question about uh, when there's 55 plus uh, going to be in play or uh, eligible for the vaccine. Um, the short answer is we don't know. The longer answer is there's been no mention of the 55 plus or, or those with comorbidities um, from the state of Iowa. We understand that it is being worked on and there is something that's out there uh, it's just that we haven't been able to see it yet. Um, and so uh, after we get through the PK through 12 uh, category, uh, probably um, the next one will be in that 55 plus, but we don't know that yet. We'll make sure we let you know. Um, and probably at best, it's a couple weeks away uh, from, from that. Uh, and perhaps the next governor's proclamation might include some of that information too. Um, relative to Prairie Ridge and our nursing home, um, we continue to inch forward, so to speak, uh, relative to um, loosening things up a little bit. Uh, we remain, remain extremely um, desirous of, of the folks out there being returned to some degree of normality um, in, in visiting those that care for them. Uh, those the loved ones. Um, we do have chat box visit. Sorry, uh, chat box visits available um, to pretty much anybody that wants them. Uh, we just need to go through our website. Um, and uh, my understanding, when you get to the Prairie Ridge page in the upper left-hand corner, there's a box, and you can reserve a time uh, to to have a chat box visit with. Um, of your friend, uh, your family member, uh, whatever, but uh, uh, please take advantage of that if, if that's a way that you can uh, 
communicate with our residents. Again, we're going to try to open that up as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we do have significant regulatory uh, obligations that we need to follow. Um, um, and, and we just need to wait for some of that guidance to catch up, uh, actually, quite frankly, uh, with where we are today. I think that pretty much wraps it up uh, in terms of bringing you any substantial information today. Um, tomorrow, March 2nd, uh, represents our one year anniversary of establishing the incident command structure and really getting into the thick of, of doing all this planning for COVID. So we've been at it for one full year at this point. Um, and I'm very grateful for our team here, for everybody that's made the effort for the compliance that that we've uh, that that we as a staff, but also our patients and family members have complied with. Um, and so it's a little bit of time to reflect and um, know that we're emerging from it, um, and and the transition from uh, this now is uh, I, I wouldn't say as great a challenge but is really the current challenge. Uh, how, how do we transition to uh, that comfort level or that new normal that uh, we're all seeking and anticipating? Um, so we're working through it. Uh, we're gonna be as aggressive as we can be. Uh, again, trying to balance uh, the science with, with the other realities as I've mentioned earlier. Um, this is gonna be the last briefing for a couple of weeks. Uh, gonna take next week off. And uh, so we'll plan on seeing you uh, most likely two weeks from today. And uh, so in the meantime, uh, we encourage you to stay strong. Uh, we ask that you stay vigilant and we certainly wish you uh, good health. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.